Now in this video, I am going to revise the chapter Magnetism and Matter. Okay. The first part of this chapter deals with this common ideas on magnetism where we have earth behaving as a magnet, the direction, directional property of magnet, repulsion as the surest test of magnetism, then magnetic monopoles do not exist and then iron and other alloys can be magnetized. Okay. Then we have the properties of magnetic field lines that is they are continuous closed loops tangent at any point on the magnetic field lines gives the direction of magnetic field. In region where the magnetic field lines are very close you have stronger magnetic field and in region where there is a wide separation between the magnetic field lines the field is weaker. Okay, The magnetic field lines do not intersect. Okay, Then you have this bar magnet as a solenoid Okay, expression for magnetic field along the axis. This is the expression for magnetic dipole moment which reduces to this. Okay, Now this is same as the magnetic field along the axis of a magnetic dipole. Okay, Then you have this magnetic dipole placed in external magnetic field. The expression for torque tau is equal to mv sin theta. m is the magnetic dipole moment. b is the strength of the magnetic field. theta is the angle between the magnetic dipole moment and the strength of the magnetic field. U is the potential energy of the dipole it is equal to minus mv cos theta. Okay, and when this dipole is uh, disturbed slightly in position of stable equilibrium, it undergoes oscillation, and this is the expression for the time period. T equal to twice pi square root of I by mv. I is the moment of inertia. Gauss law in magnetism, that is, uh, interior over closed surface V dot T s is equal to zero. So Gauss law in magnetism shows that magnetic monopoles do not exist. Okay, then the second part of this chapter is about Earth's magnetism. Okay. Now this, this diagram will help you in understanding the Earth's magnetism. Okay. Now there are two planes. So this plane, vertical plane is the magnetic meridian okay. and this plane is the geographic meridian. Okay. So the resultant field of the Earth, it will be in the magnetic meridian. So this is B. This is the resultant field of Earth and the angle made by this resultant field with the horizontal direction that is called magnetic declination. Okay magnetic declination or it's called dip okay if this is b this is dip so this is the horizontal component of earth's magnetic field and this will be the vertical component so the horizontal component of earth's magnetic field will be bh will be b cos delta and vertical component will be b sin delta so from that we can calculate the value of dip and then this is the resultant value of the magnetic field if bh and bv are given from that you can calculate the resultant magnetic field then you have some important terms associated with magnetism of matter okay the first term is magnetization it is ratio of net magnetic moment to the volume of the material okay its unit is ampere per meter okay then the resultant field b is equal to mu naught times h plus m where h is the magnetic intensity okay b is the total magnetic field magnetic susceptibility it is the ratio of magnetization to magnetic intensity okay then relative permeability magnetic permeability it is equal to 1 plus chi chi the magnetic susceptibility is small and positive for paramagnetic material for ferromagnetic materials it is large and positive for diamagnetic material magnetic susceptibility is small and negative then this magnetic permeability is also the ratio of the magnetic field to magnetic intensity and relative magnetic permeability is the ratio of magnetic permeability to magnetic permeability of free space okay this is the permeability of the medium okay okay the last part is the magnetic materials okay now magnetic materials they are of three types diamagnetic materials paramagnetic materials and ferromagnetic materials now for diamagnetic materials the magnetic susceptibility chi it is greater than equal to minus 1 and less than 0 okay so it is between 0 and minus 1 okay relative magnetic permeability it is between 0 and 1 and the magnetic permeability is less than the absolute magnetic permeability these magnets or diamagnetic materials they magnet repels diamagnetic magnet repels diamagnetic substances that is when these substances move from stronger to weaker part of the magnetic field okay the example of diamagnetic materials are bismuth, copper, lead, silicon, 
superconductors. Superconductors are the ideal die magnets and uh, for them the magnetic susceptibility is minus 1 and relative magnetic permeability is 0. Okay. Then you must go through the concept of Meissner effect. Okay. Then you have the paramagnetic materials. For paramagnetic materials the magnetic susceptibility it is be between 0 and epsilon and uh, so relative magnetic permeability it is between 1 and 1 plus epsilon and uh, this magnetic permeability is greater than permeability of free space okay they are weakly magnetized in external magnetic field that is they move from weak magnetic field to strong magnetic field for paramagnetic materials the magnetization is related to temperature by this relation m is equal to c b naught by t where b naught is the external magnetic field c is the curie constant and t is the temperature the curie law says that the magnetic susceptibility it is inversely proportional to temperature c is the curie constant mu naught is the magnetic permeability of free space okay so we have seen that magnetic permeability and relative magnetic permeability it depends on material okay and it also depends on temperature for paramagnetic materials okay now for ferromagnetic materials ma uh, magnetic susceptibility it is very much larger than one relative magnetic permeability is greater than one and magnetic permeability is greater than magnetic permeability of free space okay they are strongly magnetized in external magnetic field that is they are strongly attracted by at temperature greater than the curie temperature this ferromagnetic material becomes paramagnetic okay then the susceptibility for this ferromagnetic materials it is given by the relation c divided by c is the curie constant t minus tc okay this is for temperature greater than the curie temperature okay now ferromagnetic materials they are further classified into two groups hard ferromagnets and soft ferromagnets for hard ferromagnets magnetization persists after even after the external magnetic field is removed okay example of hard ferromagnet is elnico it is an alloy okay now soft ferromagnet here the magnetization disappears after removal of external magnetic field example is iron cobalt and nickel okay then last you have the hysteresis loop okay so this is the uh, curve between or this is a loop between magnetic field and magnetic intensity okay so at h equal to 0 b is not equal to 0 so th at this particular point this part see h is 0 but value of b is not 0 okay so this is called retentivity okay then for this bc part at c we can see that b value is equal to 0 but h is not 0 okay so it is called coercivity okay for permanent magnet the permanent magnet they need to have high retentivity high coercivity and high permeability example is steel okay for making core of electromagnets we need to get ferromagnetic material which have high permeability and low retentivity example is soft iron okay so these so this is the gist of the entire chapter magnetism and matter and hope it is beneficial to you